Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to Iguazoo. Today we're building a habitat for the main wolf and also adding a little mini golf area for some children to kind of hang out and play with. Now I am not going to take full credit for the mini golf area. This is actually provided by one of our community members and I just want to say a huge thank you to them for building it. We're going to talk a little bit more later in the episode. Now as is normal with any build, you search for inspiration and you try to build from there. And uh, that's no different for this one. I actually picked up some inspiration from the Zoo de Lille in France. They had this amazing main wolf habitat that had like a fully recessed habitat. You can see this is actually what I'm trying to build here. But this is actually not the first time I built this habitat. Uh, so as you may have uh, noticed, for those who have been following the channel, uh, I have built this habitat three times and that's why I didn't have a video last week. I struggled so hard on making this habitat. So I mentioned on a previous episode that we're in the stage in Iguazoo's development where we actually have funding. We can make these more modern looking habitats and that is no different with what we're seeing here today. Having this recessed concrete barrier and then this really cool looking, very modern style barrier for our guests, it works really well and fits within that theme that Iguazoo is growing and becoming something a little bit more profitable. Because despite what we may want in a habitat or a zoo where we want to have something focused on conservation, which I'm a huge proponent for, the reality is that you need to be able to fund these programs and sometimes you can't source government funding for these things. So creating a zoo or a zoological institute or a conservation society that is going to be self-sustaining is always going to be an important uh, aspect and an important milestone and that's really no different for Iguazoo, or at least thematically in my mind. So our zoo habitat is significantly more modern. There's gonna be a lot of really cool new features. We're gonna see a bigger backstage area. We're gonna see these really cool large habitats. And I'm kind of happy about this. Now on the flip side, even though I'm really happy that kind of focusing more on these modern habitats and zoo exhibits, the reality is that Iguazoo is coming to a close. This is actually our final habitat build for Iguazoo, which is both bittersweet and kind of cool at the same time. Cool, because this is actually my second full zoo that I've built and bittersweet because obviously I put a lot of time into this and I think I've grown my skills even more finally completing this zoo. And I realize I am terrible when it comes to completing zoos. So seeing this come to a, a close is, uh, is kind of nice because it means that I have another milestone under my belt. Now you are seeing my thought process as we build. Uh, as you know, with my backstage areas, I love using these painted brick walls and then coloring them yellow. I like to think that that's more of a traditional interior looking. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna make a full brick wall building and I'm gonna layer on some stuff on the outside. And uh, that was a terrible idea. So even though you're seeing this here right now, that is going to change significantly. So with our barrier in place and our habitat building set up, it was really time for us to focus on the foliage aspect and creating a more natural looking habitat. And I realized that when you're gonna see this habitat, it's gonna look a little too full. There's gonna be a lot of foliage, but I tell you and I assure you, our main wolves are super happy with how this habitat turned out. They're very happy with the coverage. They're very happy with all the foliage. So I will take that as a win. But I took some advice from people in our Discord. And that's right, if you didn't know there is a Discord for the community, you are more than welcome to join and come and hang out, talk all things Planet Zoo or Planet Coaster 2 or Tiny Glades as it appears to be. That game is uh, really popping off in our Discord right now, uh, but I, I digress. Uh, but I took some advice from our community. And really that was to just place the foliage that you want to place. Foliage that makes the most sense. It looks very period specific or area specific. So, you know, if we're looking for something green and lush, place whatever looks green and lush. And that's no different for this habitat. So huge shout out to everybody in the community that really helped to create this. So for the next few minutes, we're going to really talk about foliage and terrain and habitat and all this other stuff, because uh, I will admit this habitat looks pretty interesting and interesting is not a good thing right now. It's very empty and I always struggle creating these large habitats that look too empty. And even with PZ Plus, for two main wolves, we require about a thousand meter square uh, traversable area. That's a huge space when you consider that when you add in foliage and with all the terrain in it, you, you saw that giant slope at the front, uh, that's gonna cut off a lot of that. So creating something that's gonna look realistic at the same time that you're gonna create something that looks small and compact, it's a struggle. 
So I'm gonna start with rocks. Rocks are a great way to add in a lot of extra detail, but fill in the empty blank space of your habitat as well. It helps you to add some terrain, some elevation, uh, and it just looks really cool because these are gonna draw the eye away from things. So right off the bat, we have this larger raised section in the center of the habitat. This actually comes from the Zoo de Lille, and the idea behind it was to have something where maybe our main wolves might want to roam up onto, so it gives a little bit of an elevation and more of like a prime spot. And then just four different rock piles scattered around the habitat. And again, these are just to break up the wall. And speaking of the wall, you can see our barrier. This is actually a barrier from the game, which is weird because I don't normally build with actual barriers. And I didn't also realize they were flexi colors. So this particular one, I was able to color a little bit green, maybe a little too green. It might be a little bit of a shock, but the idea behind it is it's capping it off. We're getting a very solid rear to our uh, habitat because this is the end of Igwa Zoo. We're gonna wrap around and go back into the rest of the Igwa uh, experience. And then of course, just placing a bunch of different foliage. So right behind the wall, we're focusing on creating this more lush looking forest, because again, we're in South America and we are in the heart of South America. So we're really focusing and seeing a lot of different uh, colors and different trees. So we really wanna have something that's gonna look and pop a little bit more. And now that I've used the word pop, I feel like I need to kind of explain what happened there. I popped up a tree and added in some foliage. I was actually building this while streaming in Discord, uh, which is the first time I've ever done this, which is also why you're seeing my recording software up in the top right-hand corner telling me I'm recording my screen. Very annoying, and I always notice this whenever I watch a video, so I'm going to acknowledge it. Uh, but yeah, so I was playing with Blob. Blob was actually uh, giving me some tips and tricks on adding in some foliage, because if we know anything about Digital Blob when it comes to some of his builds, truly amazing and magnificent. Uh, so can't go wrong. If you ever want to see some amazing builds come together, Paws is an awesome zoo, so you should definitely check it out uh, if you haven't done so. And if I've done things right, you're going to see a little thing pop up in the top right-hand corner directing you to a Paws episode, because I think you should check out some of these builds. Blob is an amazing builder, but I am not going to uh, uh, to fan over that anymore because I realize uh, we're here to talk about the main wolf in the habitat. So we're really kind of layering in a bunch of foliage up against the wall. Again, we're trying to hide the wall, but at the same time not, which is really weird concept. I realize that we want to acknowledge the wall is there, but we also don't want to acknowledge the wall is there. It's bizarre. I get it. So after some terrain work and some terrain paint, and now it's time to add in some a little bit more details. And right off the bat, utilizing these fake trees is a cool way to break up all of your terrain, especially if you have a lot of flat spaces or empty spaces. This works wonders at filling everything in and just creating something that looks a little bit more uh, interesting or unique, because why would you not want to build something that's going to look interesting or unique? Even just adding in some of these plants on these rock walls is a great way to add some flavor and detail to your overall build. Now you can definitely see me taking a look back and stepping back, just like admiring and taking a look at the overall habitat because things are really starting to come together. We saw that really rough looking habitat was like, what are you gonna do with this? And now we're seeing it kind of pop together. And you can definitely tell that there's one thing missing and we're placing it down, which is grass. We're just missing a ton of grass in this particular habitat. So placing down a bunch of buffalo grass and then sinking it a little bit closer to the ground is a great way to create something that looks a little bit more real. And let's be honest, uh, I'm not a big fan of empty habitats. They are perfectly fine. I think my first habitats were very empty because I was still learning. So I'm not knocking the fact that you can have empty habitats. It's totally cool. I just like to add in buffalo grass. And this is what I meant earlier by saying that just place foliage that you like. Buffalo grass does not fit with the idea of Maine wolves. It does not live in uh, South America. So why would you place buffalo grass down? Because it looks awesome. And that's really what it matters. You want to place foliage that will look like it fits, but it doesn't have to be foliage that they're going to be happy with. But again, this is built on sandbox, not on franchise mode. So when you play franchise, there's definitely different constraints and things like that that you have to keep in mind. Now, as this is all coming together, I do want to kind of talk a little bit about really quickly what's happening next for the channel. So even though Iguazu is coming to a close, we are already starting to think about our next zoo. And it's going to be a franchise zoo. I love actually building in franchise. I think a lot of people like to build in franchise as well. So I'm really looking forward to uh, starting back up another franchise zoo. And this is where I want your feedback. 
But where do you think we should open up our next franchise zoo? And what kind of names do you think we should call it? I have a few that are kicking around in my head right now, but I'm pants when it comes to coming up with zoo names. So I would love to get some ideas from you guys. So pop them down in the comments below because that will really help me out. And you can actually be part of the next zoo in our Conservation Canada uh, franchise. Now on top of that, we're not just building another franchise zoo. We're also gonna be starting a uh, streaming zoo. And what I mean by a streaming zoo, this is gonna be like kind of like a tutorial zoo where you can kind of come just hang out. If you have questions about Planet Zoo, if you wanna see things come together in a slower environment, come check out this streaming zoo. And this actually works twofold because we'll have two zoos going on at the same time. You'll be able to play one on stream, one on recording. So if you wanna watch one, but not the other, that's totally cool. So I'm really excited about that. And maybe I can share some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over time. Speaking of tips and tricks, I think this is a perfect example. We've created this really deep slope uh, to separate our barrier, our guest barrier from the habitat. And this helps to add a lot of additional distance, but it also helps to cover the change in terrain because you can definitely see the natural slope here does not work out when you're trying to build. So utilizing this pretty deep uh, trench, if you will, helps us to create something pretty cool. But as you know, with trenches, you're gonna dig out a lot of dirt. So you're gonna see a lot of roots. So that's what we did. We went in and added a bucket load of roots. But I realized that roots aren't everything. So after getting some amazing feedback from our community, I definitely go back in and clean up a lot of that space. Now, with the majority of our habitat completed, it's time for us to focus on our building, our support building. And I found this amazing photo on Pinterest, which I realize in hindsight is probably not the best place to go for some inspiration, but I absolutely am a big fan of Pinterest because they have these really cool photos that you can try to emulate. And I think this is a perfect example of this. It's a living wall, but it's not a living wall. It's something a little bit more unique with some interesting architectural designs and stuff like that. And I tried to emulate it the best I could utilizing the forest panels. And uh, it took a little bit, to get it to work, a little bit of finessing, but you're seeing it all come together. And I gotta say, this is probably one of my most favorite things I've ever built in Planet Zoo when it comes to like foliage or walls. I love the design and how this came together, which again, at the end of the day, if you're a fan of what you've built, that's really all that matters. So I built one and then I just rotated it like 90 degrees every single time. So nothing too crazy. And it allowed me to have these really cool looking shapes and designs when it came to a foliage wall and it's going to kind of wrap around. I like the idea of being able to go up and as you're walking, feel these walls that will help to provide a lot of cooling uh, for your building because they are a natural uh, way to uh, absorb heat. Uh, but on top of that, it, uh, it just adds that extra little level of, uh, of greenery and conservation and talking about joining you know, man-made structures with, uh, with nature. And I think this is a perfect example of that. Now I realize I'm not showing you the entire interior build. We didn't really see a lot of the building come together, but you've seen me build these buildings before and I think that's okay. But this type of area is actually new for me. So normally when I build a habitat support building, it's pretty easy. There's like an interior that leads directly into the habitat. For this one, I wanted to have like an off exhibit area for our main wolf to kind of go and hang out, especially if maybe we were cleaning the exhibit, we wouldn't necessarily want to have the main wolves out there at the same time. Uh, Cause even though they uh, they do uh, eat, you know, a plethora of things, they are still considered a type of uh, omnivore. So we want to make sure that we limit contact as much as possible. And who knows, maybe our zoo focusing on conservation is looking to reintroduce these main wolves back into the wilderness. So we want to keep those things in mind. So creating this, off section area is a perfect way of doing this. We have a, a fake interior door that allows us to access the interior den, and then we have this exterior den as well. But this area was looking pretty empty, uh, so I ended up going in and adding some, uh, some barrels and some boxes and some water containers, things like that. And all said and done, it makes it look a little bit more rustic and, and used, which again, at the end of the day, your zoo is going to be rustic and used because you're gonna see a lot of all of that kind of come together. And that's no different with the interior of our habitat as well. You can kind of see where we went. Nothing too fancy when it comes to building in our uh, our habitat backstage areas. You've seen me do this a dime a dozen. Uh, although this area was a little bit bigger, so it was a struggle to make this look a little bit more lived in and full, which I realize is probably why people don't build backstage areas. For some reason, we don't just have an, a lot of 
uh, elements that we want to see in the backstage area it, or maybe there are and I just really haven't kind of figured out how to utilize them it's a little bit of a struggle and I think uh, I'm still learning but I hope this gives you inspiration to build your own backstage areas because they are really fun to do so and maybe I need to go on a journey to find some additional items to place in uh, in these uh, these types of buildings to make it look a little bit more realistic. This entire build actually took a lot out of me in terms of how big and how much I chewed off on this one because normally when I build something like this I really just focus on the habitat and like the building uh, and then off camera I actually ended up uh, not just doing that but I added in a, a mini golf area which you're gonna see happen shortly uh, but a lot of foliage because this is the final build so we had a lot of empty space that we needed to cover but it doesn't mean that we're quite done with Igozu yet as well uh, I need to go and try my hand at building or rather putting together some more interesting looking uh, signage for the zoo. I've always been a struggle when it comes to that type of stuff, so I'm really hoping that I can uh, do it justice and put some things together, and I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys think of it. So you'll see that in the full tour, hopefully, uh, if I don't get too uh, distracted. Now, the final portion of this build is going to be adding in this amazing mini golf set. A huge shout out to Beaver who provided this. He actually built this for Igo Zoo and I was so amazed that he went and did this uh, on his own. I had no idea that he was doing this. He actually teased a few images and he came up with this. So if you want to download this for your own zoos, I'm going to leave a link to the workshop item in the description below. And maybe I'll do a pinned comment as well, because I really think you guys should check this out. It's an amazing build and I'm super happy with it. And hopefully you guys add it to your own zoos. But that's all I got for you guys today. That is pretty much the end of the episode. Now, if you've made it this far, think about hitting the subscribe button. It definitely helps me out because it lets me uh, know I'm doing the right thing. And if you are uh, if you have some advice on how I can improve or uh, build bigger or better, leave it in the comments below because that's how we always improve it. Feedback is important to building bigger and better. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you so much for everybody who has watched, who has supported the channel and, and my growth within Iguazu. Could not have done it without you guys. Uh, and I just want to say thank you. So keep an eye out at the very end for some additional cinematic shots. You can see all of this build and its glory. And as always, ciao for now, everybody.